With the recent U.S. debut of one championship, and what I saw during that debut, and the many controversies that come out of the UFC and its fighters and its head figure Dana White, I decided to take a pulse of the overall fan base of martial arts and ask who they preferred at this juncture. I then decided to do this full comparison as a true fan of martial arts and a fan of both promotions. I figure a good place to start would be with the economics. Currently, one championship has a $1.4 billion cap. The UFC currently has a $10 billion cap. Now they are the only two martial arts companies in the industry with a market cap over $1 billion. But clearly, the UFC is worth much more at this time. Both companies are very profitable as you can tell. And part of that profitability comes from their reach, broadcast deals and distribution. Right now, One Championship has distribution in over 150 countries. Now the UFC is broadcast in over 165 countries. So these are international companies that are pretty close with regard to their reach. Now, the 2022 Nielsen report for sports consumption did show that One has a cumulative television reach of 406 million with the UFC boasting 259 million. The only other martial arts promotion listed on that report was Bellator with 11 million. So as far as television reach, one is almost double what the UFC is doing uh, in that sphere. Now, if you look at digital viewership alone, one is ahead of UFC as well. As one was ranked number two overall in 2021 digital viewership, rising from its number four ranking in a 2020 uh, Nielsen report with over 13.8 billion video views across Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. It sits just behind the number one ranked NBA, which boasts over 14.5 billion for 2021. Now, I truly believe that one championship is winning in those areas because the UFC uh, gets a majority of their viewership through streaming on ESPN, uh, the ESPN app, excuse me, and through their pay-per-views. Now, as far as streaming through the ESPN app, their events average 1.17 million uh, per event. And as far as pay-per-view buys go, they average about 500,000 uh, per pay-per-view. This is with some serious outliers you have to consider, of course. There are several uh, very popular or well-marketed pay-per-views that do in the millions. Now, at a glance, you could be forgiven for assuming uh, that both of these promotions put on the exact same type of event or provide the exact same type of entertainment. But even though these companies can be in the same category as far as the entertainment, I believe that what they provide is you know, a bit different. The UFC puts on MMA exclusive events, meaning their events only feature MMA fights. But over the years, they've started to understand the international market and they have worked to get kickboxing and grappling events on their streaming app, UFC Fight Pass. And this is done through featuring other promotions that host such events uh, like Glory Kickboxing or EBI, but they have no interest in having those types of uh, competitions on any of their UFC branded cards. But saying that, they have recently started the UFC grappling invitational so they have put their ufc branding behind grappling events that they again only feature on the fight pass now one championship started as an mma promotion but they have since shifted from mma to being the home of martial arts and through that they put on events that have fights in several disciplines recently adding grappling matches to their main cards which is going over very very well one also does many special events series, such as the One Super Series, which featured exclusively like kickboxing and Muay Thai bouts, putting on several uh, matches or excuse me, fights to find champions in all the weight classes of those martial arts. They have announced also an open weight Muay Thai tournament with a $1 million prize. That's, man, I'm so excited for that. And my favorite are the One Friday Fights or One Lumpini, which are fight cards featuring uh, MMA and Muay Thai fights 
hosted in Lumpini in Thailand every Friday and it is streamed for free on YouTube. Man, I never miss the Friday fights. I mean, considering all this, I have to root for one championship. Just given their understanding of a diverse market and fully implementing that diversity as far as what the fans may want to see directly into their cards. Now that could be argued uh, or debated on both sides. There are fans like me who enjoy a multitude of martial arts and enjoy seeing um, those different types of fighting styles featured on one card. That way you're, you know, nothing ever really gets dull. You're not watching the same thing over and over again. But there could be like diehard fans who watch an MMA card because they just want to watch MMA. They have no interest in Muay Thai or kickboxing or grappling. Uh, they really just want to see what they came to see. This again is probably why you don't see like mixing of uh, different things on other sports. You tuned in to watch what you tuned in to watch. But this is where MMA fans are different because MMA is an amalgam of several martial arts. So when it formed, it formed by bringing fans from all those individual martial arts into one mixed martial arts fighting style. For the diehard fans or martial artists themselves, they truly appreciate these different skills as they probably train in them or just are fans of them. You know, they do jujitsu and they love watching the grappling, but they love watching the grappling in an MMA fight as well. Or they do kickboxing and Muay Thai. And again, they, they like to see it by itself as a straight up competition, two Muay Thai fighters going at it. But they also like to see the striking in MMA as it's applied in that form of fighting. But to a casual fan who loves MMA as the sport and doesn't have a, like a deeper understanding or appreciation for the individual martial arts that go into mixed martial arts, I can see how all they would want to see is MMA because they, again, don't have a deeper understanding or appreciation of the individual arts. But that's where one championship was a just the genius of what they've done is understanding that they can bring all these fans from all the different styles of martial arts and give them all individually what they want to see while also offering MMA as a whole on their cards. So now let's talk about the product or the products. So the events is one revenue stream and of course the events are powered by the engine which are the products and I consider the products to be the athletes or the, the martial artists or the fighters, right? Now the UFC pushes the fighter brand, you know, quotations there, fighters. Uh, you know, the brash badass who talks a lot of crap and can back it up, you know, taking on all comers and running his mouth all the way to the cage. There are a few martial artists in the ranks of the UFC, but the UFC truly puts its marketing and pay behind the mouthier of the bunch. You know, I get it, man. Attitude sells. Toughness sells. Western audiences have long been drawn to such characters. Love them or hate them, you will watch them fight to see them win or to see them lose. Now on the other end, one championship creates stars who they believe embody martial arts. But they do this in a way that where they want their stars to be seen as like superheroes. They want them to be looked up to positively. Chatri Sichotong has stated this often and some of the marketing uh, during their US debut featured posters made to look like comic book covers. He wanted his athletes to represent themselves and the brand within certain tenets of martial arts. He likes trash talk, but only when speaking about someone's skills or previous performances or future performances. He just doesn't like anyone attacking the fighter's personal lives or family members, etc. With that said, with one championship trying to create a footprint and break into the US market, how will such a humble, respectful, and otherwise tame behavior go over with US audiences? An audience that's sold on conflict and ugly comments. The trashier the behavior, sometimes the better. Well, take a look for yourself. What I experienced was quite odd the night of May 5th. On a card with a lot of foreign competitors and the chance of USA, USA, it just kept roaring through the arena. Now this, you know, it's, it's kind of always bugged me a little bit. 
with the lesser known foreign competitors. Now I say that as far as they are lesser known to US audiences. This was the case. But when a couple of international stars took the cage, such as Stamp, who was fighting a US fighter, she was cheered the loudest while the US fighter was slightly booed. I prefer these moments where the athlete is cheered for their abilities and who they are, and not by what country they come from. It was the same thing with Rod Tang. When he took the stage to enter the cage, the crowd went wild. These two international stars were both in serious shock by the reception they received from the US audience. Given their humble beginnings and spending their entire careers blowing up in the Asian market, I am certain they were unsure what their US debut would look like. It was glorious, which shows you the reach of one. These Asian fighters are massive stars in the US with huge fan bases, and that's through what was done online and with social media and through Amazon prior to them touching down physically on US soil for a US、uh, debut. Now, Why this is important is that it does show that Western audiences are open to such star athletes. They are open to these martial artists who are humble and kind and fun to watch in the cage and on social media. They don't have to be spoon fed、uh, conflict or trash talk、uh, to be excited about the meal to come. But that's a testament to one championship's work through social media. Giving you a look at these fighters' lives and their social, through their social medias and through、um, the company's social medias,、uh, making them relatable, making you become fans of them before you really see them fight. Or as you've seen them compete, you become even bigger fans, understanding how down to earth and fun and friendly they are, or how fierce they are when it comes to their training and their. Like their competitiveness, but not necessarily their angst towards each other. Now, let's talk about the packaging of the company or, you know, their mission statements or their goals. So, the Ultimate Fighting Championship's mission statement is help promote the sport of MMA evolve into a major world sport. I don't know if that's their current mission statement, but I know that that's how they first started. And the UFC spent the first decade after it's purchased by Zufa doing exactly that. They spent a lot of money and time and full effort getting the sport of MMA legalized in all 50 states and then working hard to get it into as many countries as it could. Now, one championship aims to be your home、uh, for martial arts entertainment. Chatri Sichotong stated his goal was to create the first multi billion dollar pan Asian sports media property and promote the values of integrity, humility, honor, respect. Courage, discipline, and compassion in martial arts, which he believes Western MMA promotions have lost. Although initially starting as an MMA promotion, one has repositioned itself as a martial arts promotion. They feature several styles of martial arts, including Muay Thai, kickboxing, and Jiu Jitsu. They don't limit themselves to just MMA. This has worked to bring a much broader audience internationally. Chatri Sichotan does have a strong respect for Western promoters, but explained. They approach it in a pure sports manner, whereas we approach it in Asia as a martial arts approach, just in terms of positioning to the audience and everything else. That's very important. Now, let's talk about marketing and the market. Now, the UFC doesn't have to market itself as heavily anymore with regard to brand awareness. They are so synonymous with MMA that many casual viewers refer to MMA as UFC. They primarily market their upcoming events and their fighters. Now, one is still building brand awareness, especially in the West. One markets itself as the home of martial arts, highlighting many styles of martial arts to cater to fans of various fighting styles, which then opens their eyes and interest in, to like other martial arts and fighters while watching their cards. This works to expand the brand significantly. So, many people who enjoy so many different martial arts can find what they want on a One FC card. One started hosting events in 2011 and was just off to a really rough start as an MMA promotion exclusively. One struggled in his first three years. 
the company's vision of highlighting martial arts and the martial arts heroes representing their countries on a global stage was lost on audiences who just thought it was about just the fighting and the violence. Things did turn around for one after a large push on social media platforms and YouTube. One started releasing much of its content for free online, building a buzz and interest in the promotion's events, and mainly creating awareness of the brand itself. Soon, broadcast deals in over 150 countries followed. One FC became one championship, and they were off to the races with consistent growth ever since. Most recently, breaking into the US market in a big way. This was through quite a few means. This was through their continuous generosity in providing free content and full fight cards on YouTube, followed by a great partnership with Amazon Prime, which gave fans another way to watch without having to uh, consistently shell out large sums of money for pay-per-views, like you have to do with UFC cards. Then they made their US debut on May 5th of 2023, with a landmark event and stacked fight card featuring an icon of MMA who the UFC attempted to fully erase and completely disrespected to the dismay of many MMA fans. They also loaded it with international stars from Muay Thai and grappling as well. I truly believe this has pushed one into the minds of a market that was truly monopolized by one promotion for a very long time. And after being at the event on May 5th and seeing the energy from the production value they put into the live events, it was just one of the best experiences I've ever had at an MMA, martial arts, or combat sports event. Now, I don't know if this matters or not, but let's just do a quick CEO comparison for those who might be interested in this comparison as far as like, I don't know how much this will impact you with regard to whether you're a fan of one promotion or the other, or will it like shift you one way or the other. But as we're doing all these comparison, I think we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the leaders of these companies. Let's start with the UFC. Dana White has come up as a brash businessman and through his determination and through his aggressive, no BS nature, he's grown the UFC into the sports behemoth that it is. Not only that, but under his guidance and on the UFC's dime, the company is responsible for bringing MMA to the masses and getting it legalized in all 50 states and branching out internationally and ultimately making it known to the world. I don't know if that can be debated. Without the UFC, would MMA have become what it is? But several things become questionable over the long run under his leadership. There are inconsistencies of his treatment of the fighters themselves and his reactions to their behavior outside of the cage. Fighter pay is a constant sore spot. And although Dana White has been known to do good things for his fighters and others in the way of bonuses and gifts and donations to families in need, etc., he's also turned his back on some people and allows others to continue to behave in ways that are often just outright disgraceful. He himself being caught slapping and shoving his own wife I remember being a fan of Dana White in the 2000s, watching all the ways he would step up for fighters and give money and bonuses to people. He, he wouldn't take any crap or allow any excuses from fighters and on and on. And, and, you know, and maybe I grew up or he changed or, or maybe it's a bit of both, but I just don't view him the same as the uh, headpiece of that promotion. Now, Chatri Sichotung is a lifelong martial artist who put his passion into creating a true home for martial artists to shine. Not fighters, but martial artists. He has worked hard to maintain the values of martial arts while running what could be seen simply as a fight promotion. So far, I'm unaware of any scandals from himself or any of his fighters. And he's very generous with his bonuses towards his athletes on his cards. As for fighter pay, he seems to pay well. No one seems to be complaining about pay with one. Now, you have to consider the cost of living in many of these countries is much different from Western countries. So that $50,000 bonus may stretch a bit further for a, a, an athlete in one as opposed to an, a UFC fighter who lives in the US. But he still seems to take good care of his fighters financially. Now to wrap this up, let's talk about the future market and then just how I feel about the uh, comparison as a whole. The UFC had a meteoric rise in the first 10 years after Ziffa acquired it and pushed for mainstream acceptance. They had a hard first couple years, much like one did, 
Uh, since then, their growth has just been steady, and they've worked through many partnerships, but they continue to be the most recognizable brand in this space. Now, One has also seen a meteoric rise in its first 10 years, and its growth is continuous. Now they are attempting to break fully into the U.S. market, not just through digital viewership, but through live events on U.S. soil. The UFC was unable to fully crack into the Asian market, although attempts were made by them. This is where One was able to tap into a population of over 4 billion. With One having the Asian market sewn up like that and the UFC not being able to put a large footprint in that market, if One gets a strong foothold in the US market and the Western markets, I see them becoming right alongside, coming up right alongside the UFC financially and with popularity. I don't know if they can surpass uh, what the UFC has built, but I think they can give them a bit of a run. And with that said, I believe a little competition for the UFC is good and is needed. Some previous competitors who gained significant growth in the, in the space of MMA as a promoters were ultimately bought out and rolled into the UFC. We're talking like celebrated promotions like Pride FC, WEC, and Strike Force. Now, although Bellator and PFL are alive and kicking, they're out there doing their thing, they haven't proven to be a direct threat with regard to their size, their viewership, or their earnings. Competition will always push people and companies to strive to provide a better product and to be better themselves. So I believe that having another giant in the space will help both of these promotions stand a bit taller as they're working to keep their audiences happy and to attract new fans. Now, let's talk about my personal feelings on this comparison. Personally, I have absolutely fallen in love with one championship. This is after being a UFC fan for two decades. First, I just became a fan through their fight cards and their events. Being able to watch all the martial arts that I love all on one card, each card I just became a bigger and bigger fan. Then the athletes, just allowing them to let their skills speak and praising their discipline and humility. And as for the company as a whole, working with them on a very small scale regarding hosting some of their athletes and working with a few of their employees, my wife and I were treated so well. And every employee I interacted with were just an absolute pleasure to work with. And the athletes were so kind and humble and respectful. I mean, these were all true martial artists. There were no egos from them while working with a very small gym owner and trainer here in the US. The fact that they were willing to even work with me was amazing given the size of my school in comparison to many in my area. Now of course, you're going to feel as though that's, that skews my perspective with regard to this video and this comparison. And you're absolutely right. As a fan, I feel like I've been treated well with regard to the events they put on and the content that they put out that I'm able to view for free without pouring all kinds of money into pay-per-views and uh, streaming services and whatnot. The continuous stuff provided through social media allows me to become a bigger fan of the athletes within the promotion. And lastly, directly, as a small business owner, having an opportunity to interact with One Championship has shown me their values. And as if they needed anything else to make me a bigger fan, that just sealed the deal. And it appears from the survey that I put on my channel that I'm not alone in being a bigger fan of one championship right now. So what do you think? Watching what's going on with both promotions, watching the, the fight cards and everything that's being put out, hearing some of the stuff that I talked about in this video, how do you feel and where do you stand? Now let me finish with saying this, this is not a take it or leave it type thing, like if I'm a fan of one then I will never watch the other kind of thing. You could be a fan of both, but I'm just asking, which one are you a bigger fan of right now? Let me hear it in the comments guys. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.